This is a micro four sort camera, and this is a four sort camera, not a micro one. The existence of those two different systems that are very similar but are incompatible can lead to error when buying equipment. In this video, we are going to see the difference and similarities between the two systems, and more importantly, how you can easily spot which is which when you're buying equipment. With film cameras, the reflex, single lens reflex that is architecture has always been a favorite of the pros and enthusiastic photographer. So, the same architecture was kept when the first good quality digital camera were made, so to keep the same metering system and more importantly, the same autofocus systems. However, this architecture have some disadvantages which on digital camera are not balanced with enough advantages. Indeed, the presence of a mirror between the lens and the sensor push the lens further away, make it harder to design, more costly to manufacture, and also bigger. On the other hand, the framing through the taking lens, which is the main advantage of DSLR, is still possible on a mirrorless digital camera. Camera makers were therefore keen to move away from the reflex architecture. And so, a few years after the four-third system was developed, came the micro four-third system. The objective was to build better, smaller, cheaper cameras and lenses. And as you can see, size-wise, this approach was a success. Micro four-third camera are smaller, but more importantly, micro four-third lenses are much, much smaller. Look at those lenses. They both share the same characteristic, but one is way bigger than the other. The two systems share the exact same size for the sensor, 18 by 13 and a half millimeters. But since the objective was to reduce the size of the equipment, the lens mount size has been reduced as well. There is therefore no compatibility between the two systems. In short, here is a list of differences between the two systems. The flange back distance, that is the distance between the sensor and the back of the objective, has been halved going from 40 mm to only 20 mm. The diameter of the mount is reduced by 9 mm. The number of pins on the mount goes from 9 to 11. If you have an old four-third lens, you can still use it on a micro four-third camera. There are cheap adapters everywhere on the internet. However, these are not cheap enough to make the purchase of a four-third lens economical if the idea is to use it on a micro four-third camera. So make sure that you are buying indeed a micro four-third lens for your camera if that's what you are after. Luckily, it is quite easy to spot the difference between the micro four-third and the four-third system. Olympus micro four-third lenses are marked as M Zuiko Digital on the front of the lens, while four-third lens are just marked Zuiko Digital without the M. There are also two what they call lens cap, like this one, which are marked only as Olympus, not Zuiko, and those exist only for micro four-third camera but they are very easy to spot because they look more like a body cap than a proper lens. You may have noticed that so far I haven't mentioned Panasonic. This is because Panasonic, while it's a major actor for the micro four-third system, never been very successful with its four-third cameras. There were only two four-third reflex made by Panasonic, the L1 and the L10. These were sold along with some Leica branded lenses, which means that Panasonic never sold a lens for four-third camera under its own make. Leica made lenses for both systems. The older lenses for the reflex for the four-third system are branded Leica D, while the smaller 
lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system are branded Leica DG. So once again, easy to spot when you see the front of the lens. Sigma is the last company that have made lenses for both systems. And once again, the key to identify them in those cryptic letters that are part of the appellation of the lens. DG means that the lens is for a four-third camera, while DN means that it's a macro four-third lens. That's it. You know why we ended up with two different systems with very similar name and very similar features. So next time you buy the wrong lens, it will be your fault. And the only thing I will tell you is... I informed you thusly. <laughs> That's it, guy. It was a short video. I hope you find it useful, informative. And if you did so, please let me know in the comments. If you have any other question about this system or this system, let me know as well. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time with more tips on how to buy sell cameras. And I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.